Welcome to another video all and in today's video we're going to finish up our little exploration of Decker Decker's double double arithmetic and in particular we're going to be looking at uh, multiplication and division. So before we go through those there's actually a couple of helper functions that are often employed. One is called split and the other is called mul12 or mul12. And the purpose of the split function it actually takes a uh, it takes a double as input and it splits it into a double double version. So it doesn't actually add any extra precision. It's just like a cast from double to double double. And in Decker's original paper he actually doesn't uh, factor the split function out as a separate function. He just puts it uh, in line in his code. But a lot of other authors factor it out and I think it's just um, it's convenient to factor it out. So we'll, uh, we'll treat it as a separate function. And the other helper function is mul12. The purpose of the mul12 function is uh, it takes a it takes two doubles as input and it multiplies them together but it produces a double double result. So it's sort of like a, just a regular multiplication function but it produces a super accurate uh, result. 128 bit result. Uh, anyway once we go through those two functions we can have a bit of a chat about uh, multiplication and division themselves. So that is the plan. Stanley, let's do this. <laughs> let's talk about split and mul12, these little helper functions. Let's say that we've got a double A set to 6.2 and we want to split it into two halves. So we want somehow to isolate the 6 in the upper half of a double double version and then the 0 0.2 in the lower half. How would we go about this? Well, there is a quick way of doing this that you might be able to conceive. I'll show that at the end, but uh, Decker's method is, uh, is more clever and a little bit more flexible. So it's an interesting technique. We'll go through that first. We want to isolate this upper digit just here. Decker's method relies on, on an interesting sequence of steps. See, if we subtract and add some value to our input, it's going to cause it to forget its lower half. It's a little bit weird, but have a look at this. If we say um, A minus 20 plus 20, then we'll get 6.2 minus 20, which will give you negative 13.8, but our little system is going to round that to negative 14 since it's only got two digits. Then if we add 20 back on again, we get negative 14 plus 20 equals 6. So you can see that by subtracting and adding 20 to this particular input, we've isolated the upper digit, the 6. But the trouble is 20 doesn't work for every value. So if our input was 45, then we'd have 45 minus 20 equals 25. And then when we add the 20 back on again, we just get 45 back. So we haven't isolated anything. So the number 20 will actually only isolate digits within a particular range. And what we really want to do is subtract and add some value that is a scaled version of our input such that it will isolate the digit regardless of its order of magnitude. And the way that Decker achieves this is he computes a constant, which I'm going to call scale. Now this was called uh, capital C in the original paper, but I'll call it scale here. And to compute this scale constant, a little bit strange, but you take your um, you take the number of digits of precision that you've got and you divide it by two. We've got two digits of precision in our little system just here. So two divided by two give you one. You raise your base to that power. So we'd have 10 to the power of one since we're using decimal. And then you add one to that. Our scale constant will be 10 to the power of 1 plus 1. Give us 11. Now if you're dealing with uh, actual doubles, then they've got like a 53-ish bit mantissa. I say kind of ish because there's a, an implied bit as well and whether or not you count that, who, who, who on earth knows? <laughs> You've got about 53 bits in your mantissa, so you'd have uh, 53 divided by 2, which would give you 26 and a half. And people tend to round this up to 27. And then the base is 2. So for an actual double, your scale constant would be 2 to the power of 27 plus 1. Anyway, moving back to our little uh, example that we were going through, 6.2, we've got a scale constant of 11 for our little system. You compute a temporary variable called p, and you set p to your input multiplied by scale. So here we'll have 6.2 multiplied by 11. And that's going to give us 68.2, which is going to be rounded to 68. And this value, if we subtract and add that to our input, we will isolate the upper digit. So we'll have capital R equals our input A minus P plus P. 
So if we step through this, we got 6.2 minus 68 will give us negative 61.8, which would be rounded to negative 62. And then when we add the 68 back on again, lo and behold, we have isolated a six. Well done us. Now that's gonna work regardless of the order of magnitude that that six happens to reside. And from here, it's easy to isolate the 0.2. We just take the input a and we subtract this upper digit. So we'll get lowercase r equals a minus capital R. Give us 6.2 minus 6 gives us 0.2. And at this point, we have a double, double version of our input. You'll note that a bunch of things don't split in the way that maybe you would expect. If you've got a number that doesn't fill out half of the precision, then it's not going to split in halves. But in general, the approach works really, really well. Now you might be wondering, looking at all of this uh, nonsense, you might be thinking, can you not just mask half of the mantissa? And uh, the answer is yes, yes you can, you can indeed. So if you're in a situation where it's natural to do uh, Boolean operations on floating point, then you can just mask out the top half with, the, with an AND operation. The downside, and the reason why you might go with Decker's method, the quick method actually relies on the bit pattern of the uh, format itself. So you'd be relying on like, IEEE 754. Decker's method actually works regardless of the bit pattern. So Decker's method is actually more flexible. Anyway, that is the split function. Split, good stuff. What a great function. Now, great as split is, it's no good without its friend, mul12. I don't know why this is called mul12. I guess it's mul1 to 2 or mul half or something like that. I don't know. The purpose of the mul12 function, it takes two doubles, it's just regular doubles, and it multiplies them together, but it produces the double double result. Let's say that what we've got is two doubles. We've got uh, A equals 6.2 and B equals 4.8. Now I'm going to call these original A and original B just to sort of differentiate them from the A and B that we're just about to see throughout the arithmetic. The first step of Decker's mol 1, 2 function is to split the inputs into double, double versions of themselves. So we'll have the double, double A is the split version of original A. We're gonna have uppercase A equals six and lowercase A equals 0 0.2. And then B is the split version of original B. Uppercase B will be 40 and lowercase B will be eight. Now, if you actually run the split algorithm on these inputs, you might actually come up with some slightly quirky values. Like you might get um, 50 as capital B and negative two as lowercase b, that sort of thing. But we'll just assume that the split is uh, perfect for this particular example. It doesn't make a difference to the arithmetic. Anyway, having a look at this, we've got a split version of A and B. The way that Decker's mul12 function works is pretty much the same as pen and paper multiplication. It's kind of like just having two two digit numbers. And to compute the product, what we really want to do is just compute uppercase A times uppercase B plus lowercase A times uppercase B plus uppercase A times lowercase B plus lowercase A times lowercase B. So we just have four little products there. And we sum them all together, we will have the answer. The first step after we've split is to multiply the upper two halves. So we've got P, a temporary variable, equals capital A times capital B. And for us, that'll give us six times 40, which will give us 240 as P. The next thing that we've got to compute is the inner products. So we say that Q equals lowercase a times uppercase B plus uppercase A times lowercase B, which for us will give us 0 0.2 times 40 plus six times eight. And if we compute that out step by step, you end up with eight plus 48, which will give you 56. So we've got P equals 240 and Q equals 56. Now most of the final result that we're gonna compute here is gonna be in P, since uh, P is the top two digits multiplied together. But some of the inner product Q that we just computed might actually overflow into P. So what we do is we add them together and allow that overflow to happen and store that result in capital R. So we'll have capital R equals P plus Q. Give us 240 plus 56 equals 296 which will be rounded to 300 for our little system. Capital R is the upper half of the result. Now we can have a look at computing the lower half of the result. Now, if there was overflow just then, then we wanna actually remove that. So in order to compute the lower half of the result, we start out with lowercase r equals P minus capital R plus Q, 
which will give us 240 minus 300 plus 56. And if you work that out step by step, you get negative 60 plus 56. And then if you do that, you get uh, negative four. But there's one more multiplication missing. So we've taken care of multiplying the upper two halves of our inputs, and we've also multiplied the two little inner products there. We've also got to multiply the lower digits. So that's the final step. R equals R plus lowercase a times lowercase b, which for us will give us negative four, which is uh, lowercase r, plus 0 0.2 times eight, give us negative four plus 1.6, we get negative 2.4. And at this point, we have our final result. Uh, we have capital R equals 300 and lowercase r equals negative 2.4. You'll notice it's a little bit strange there with a negative number in our lower half of our result, but this does happen. Uh, it happens less often with real doubles than it does with uh, a little system like the one we're using just here, but it does happen. At any rate, we've got the double-double version of the result. Our original inputs, 6.2 multiplied by 48 is 297.6. That is the four-digit result from multiplying our two inputs. Now with our little system just here, we've just multiplied um, two two-digit numbers together and gotten a four-digit result. It's not really that spectacular, but if you do this with uh, actual doubles, then you get a hugely precise multiplication and it's very awesome. <laughs> now, some of you may be wondering, can you not carrot super this? And uh, it's a good thought, it's an interesting thought, but uh, from what I can tell, you cannot carrot super this. And the reason is that uh, carrot super, when you're coding the little intermediate operands, Sometimes it's helpful that floating point will maintain the correct order of magnitude for all of the digits, but at other times it's not helpful that it's going to maintain that order of magnitude. So when you come to the point where you've actually got to add together the digits within a number, it's actually not convenient at all uh, with floating point. You've got to somehow figure out how to align your two digits together, your two halves, in order that you can add them together. And I mean, you could do that with maybe um, logarithms or you could perform some kind of tricky work with the exponent fields or something like that. But at the end of the day, whatever you do, it's not going to be fast. And so I can't see any convenient way to uh, carrot super this myself. Uh, but I'm happy to be proven wrong if you can figure out how to carrot super this. The mul function that we're just about to have a look at actually only has three multiplications anyway, so there is no point in uh, converting that over to the carrot super algorithm. Great algorithm though, Anatoly. Well done, mate. Well done. Okay, so those are the two helper functions. By Jove, we've done it. Let's have a talk about the uh, two not so helper functions, mul and uh, div themselves. I love just the economy of it. So Decker is a, he's a clever, clever guy and he doesn't perform operations that he doesn't need. And I, I love that, you know, I really appreciate economy in code. I think it's so often lacking nowadays. We're so far away from how the uh, programming actually works that it's difficult to even achieve any sort of economy in a lot of modern languages. You don't need the final small multiplication. And so Decker doesn't actually put that in the arithmetic. We're going to multiply two double doubles together. We got A and B. A is set to 52.92. B is set to 37.12. If we just look at the components of that, we got uh, capital A is 52, capital B is 37, and then the lowercase letters are 0 0.92 and 0 0.12. Now, Decker mul works something like mul12 that we just saw. We've kind of got to just sum together all of those little products, just like we did for mul12, except if you think about it, there's actually no point in multiplying the two lowest letters together. No matter what that result is, it won't fit in the final result. Really only got three multiplications to perform. Multiply the two capital letters and then add on the two inner products. So that is pretty much how this uh, Decker mole works. Uh, we start by multiplying the two upper halves of our inputs. So we've got 52 multiplied by 37. But we have to make sure that this result is as accurate as possible. So instead of multiplying these things normally, we actually call the mul12 function to create a very precise result. This is going to give us a four digit result. We say that uh, the double double t is the result of calling the mul12 function with a and b, capital A and b as parameters, which is going to give us 52 multiplied by 37 gives us 1924. So t, the result here is a double double. It's got uh, an upper half of 1,900 and the lower half is 24. 
The next thing that we've got to do is compute the two inner products. So this is capital A multiplied by lowercase b plus capital B multiplied by lowercase a. And we store this in another temporary variable. I'm just going to call this one c for no particular reason. And these are just double multiplication. This is not mul 1, 2. These are just normal double arithmetic. So we've got uh, 52 multiplied by 0 0.12 plus 0 0.92 multiplied by 37, which is going to give us uh, 6.24 plus 34.04. And then we've got to round that. And uh, it'll come out to 6.2 plus 34. And if we add those two together, we get 40.2. We've got to round again. We end up with 40. A lot of arithmetic and rounding, of course, the um, computer, the CPU has no trouble with this at all. It, it's just really awkward to do on paper. Uh, OK, so we've got C, which is largely the lower half of our result. But we've also got the lower half of T, which might add something to that. So onto C, we can add uh, the lower half of T. So we'll end up with uh, C plus equals T which will give us uh, 40, which is the value of C. 40 plus 24 equals 64. Okay, good. Now we can start building the actual final result. Our capital R will be the upper half of our final result. And capital R is whatever the top half of T is. So we've got uh, 1900 in this example. But there might be some little part of C that overflows into that. And we've got uh, capital R equals capital T plus C just allow any of that overflow to happen. Capital R equals 1900 plus 64, which gives us 1964. And after rounding, you'll find that that actually goes up to 2000. And now we can compute the lower half of the final result. So all we've got to worry about here is just removing any of that overflow that might have happened and then add on C. So we end up with lowercase r equals capital T minus capital R plus C, which will give us 1900 minus 2000 plus 64. And if we work all that arithmetic out, we end up with negative 36. And we have our final answer. Uh, the final answer is 1964. The actual answer there, if you work that out, if you bash that into the old uh, abacus, you'll find that the answer is 1964.3904. So that is uh, as close as we can get with our little four digit double double system. Pretty much just multiply the top two halves and then the two inner products and you perform a little bit of shuffling around and you're done. Okay, that was pretty cool. Now the final algorithm that we're going to have a look at is Decker's division algorithm. And I love this. I really love it. So just like uh, multiplication in division, Decker shows his uh, prowess for being uh, economical in terms of his uh, number of operations. And if you think about it, what we're doing here is dividing a double double by another double double, but we're only maintaining the top two digits of the result. So in effect, kind of what we're doing is just dividing a double double by a double. That's kind of what ends up happening. Uh, it's clever, it's smart, it's economical. This is Decker division. The final algorithm. Here we go, Decker division. Let's do this. All righty, we've got uh, double doubles A and B. We've got 17.37 uh, stepping into the ring this time. And we're going to divide that by 2.819. Capital A equals 17, lowercase a equals 0 0.37, capital B equals 2.8, and lowercase b equals 0 0.19. Now, Decker division is really, really clever. I love how succinct it is. You know, there's no computation of anything that we don't need, which means that basically what we're going to do is divide the double double a by the upper half of b. Since whatever the division of the lower half of B is, it won't actually be represented in the final result. I love that economy, you know, it's just, um, it's really smart. We begin by computing a temporary variable, which I'm going to call U for upper. So this is the division of the upper two halves. We've got capital U equals capital A divided by capital B. And that's going to be uh, 17 divided by 2.8. And if you whack that into the old uh, Excel spreadsheet, you'll find that the result is 6.071428, blah, 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 blah. If we round that to just two digits, we end up with U equals 6.1. Now, U is an approximation to the final result. How many times does A go into B? Well, it's going to be approximately 6.1 times. The next thing that we do is we multiply U by capital B and compute a temporary double double, which is T. And this is seemingly senseless, but it's one of those clever steps again. 
This should, in uh, regular algebra, just compute A again, but because we're dealing with a floating point here and there's all sorts of rounding magical things happening, we're actually not going to compute A again. What we're going to compute is the amount of A that's accurately described by U after the division. So we've got to be careful here and maintain as much precision as possible for T. So T is going to be a double-double and we're going to use the mul12 function. The double-double T equals mul12 of U and capital B. Give us 6.1 times 2.8, which will come out to be 17.08. And there is no rounding required. That bad boy is exact as. Okay, so we know that the upper half of the final result is going to be somewhere near U. But what about the lower half? Well, to compute the lower half, we're going to make another little temporary variable here. And I'm going to call this one L for lower. We've got uh, L equal to this rather ugly looking expression. Uh, L equals capital A minus capital T minus lowercase t plus lowercase a minus u times lowercase b all divided by capital B. Quite a mouthful. What on earth does all of that do? Well, let's have a bit of a step through this thing because it's not really that complicated. It starts out with capital A minus capital T minus lowercase t. And what this is going to do is remove anything from A that's accounted for already by U. T was a little temporary variable that we're using to, to figure out how much U accounts for. So we've got to remove that from A. We don't have to divide that anymore. It's already accounted for. So we'll have 17 minus 17 minus 0 0.08. And if you compute that out, the two 17s just kind of zero each other a little bit. And then you end out with negative 0 0.08 for lowercase l. And the next thing that happens is we add a on. We've still got to divide the lower half of a. So we add that on. We get negative 0 0.08 plus 0 0.37 will give us 0 0.29. And the next thing that we do is we subtract u multiplied by lowercase b. We're saying that B goes into A at least U times. So we've also got to remove U multiplied by lowercase b before we perform the final division. And that's what this little minus UB is. For us, we're going to have L minus equals UB, which will give us 0 0.29 minus 6.1 multiplied by 0 0.019. And if you compute out that first uh, multiplication there, you get um, negative 6.1 times 0 0.019 will give you negative 0 0.1159. And then you round that to negative 0 0.12. And then if you subtract that from 0 0.29, you end up with uh, 0 0.17. And finally, we can divide by uppercase B. So 0 0.17 divided by uppercase B, which is 2.8, will give you 0 0.060714, etc., etc., etc. And that's going to be rounded to two digits. So we'll end up with 0 0.061. And now we've got U and L, and these are fairly close to the final upper and lower halves of the final result. The final part should seem very familiar by now. We've got uh, capital R equals U plus L which will give us 6.1 plus 0 0.061 in this little example. We'll end up with uh, 6.161, but that'll be rounded to 6.2. And then finally, lowercase r equals u minus r plus l. We'll have 6.1 minus 6.2 plus 0 0.061, and that's going to give us uh, negative 0 0.1 plus 0 0.061. And finally, if you compute that out, you get negative 0 0.039. And we have our final result, capital R equals 6.2, lowercase r equals negative 0.039. That leads to the double-double representation of the quotient of A and B, R equals 6.161. And if we actually perform the division of our original inputs, we've got 17.37 uh, divided by 2.819, we get 6.161759 for whatever, whatever, whatever. We have indeed computed the quotient of our double double inputs A and B accurate to four digits. Well done. And that is the final of the DECA arithmetic operations. That is uh, all four operations. And I might put up on the screen somewhere just a little demo of how you would um, see out these uh, double doubles because it's convenient to have a way to actually uh, view what the what your numbers have in them while you're while you're programming, so you just got to override the um, what's it called like the extraction operator for C out or something like that. I'll, I'll put it up on the screen anyway, so you can have a bit of a look at that. Just an example of how to print out 
a decimal version of what a double double has. It's been a, it's been a fun journey through uh, the amazing world of double double arithmetic. I really tried my best to explain everything sort of step by step in a simple way because I felt like um, Decker's paper, Decker's paper. If you've had a look at his uh, original paper, it's impenetrable. I mean, it's difficult to read, and I'm not just talking about the font. <laughs> but I hope in making this video. Um, that I've put out onto the internet something genuinely valuable uh, for those few people and those uh, few circumstances that uh, need to understand double double arithmetic. Anyway, uh, I don't expect this video in particular will get a lot of views. This is really just for the uh, people that were following along with the first video. And uh, I just want to say for those people that have gotten through the entire series, thank you very much for watching. Uh, it's been a pleasure to present double double arithmetic. Good on you, Decker. You're a legend, mate. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a really good day. Adios.